right, a good day to uh, all. Uh, Sam here on a Friday midday. What are we, March 2nd? And uh, since it's Friday, we are going to do uh, take a look here at Bitcoin. And uh, I've got it, got it up here. Now, before, before I get into that, I'm going to do something I don't often do, and that is a shameless plug. Uh, because I'm, I'm proud of something that we've been putting together uh, for the last uh, oh, couple of months here. I thought I would just show you this here. So we have uh, just launched this and we moved away from Patron, which many of you may have uh, seen. But this is, uh, this is the new uh, TradeDevils.com website here. So you can come over here. If you just go to TradeDevils.com, it will, it will kick you to this address. You can come in here, you read a little bit more about what we do uh, and the kind of education that we offer. And you know, kind of click through here and see if you like it. One thing that um, that I do get asked a lot about is uh, for personal coaching. So we've we've made that an option here. So if you come up here up to our, our, our menu here and you go to coaching, you can book it in 30 minute or 60 minute increments. And then we're also doing small group coaching. So we might do it in a in a webinar format for you where, you know, if you had a you know, two or three friends you want to get together and share the cost, that kind of thing. We can do a, a small group coaching that we're doing as well. We like to keep that at about three people. But the one-on-one -on -one is there and bookable, as is the group coaching. So if you're interested in that kind of one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, exchange of information and, and uh, coaching and review of where you are in your learning curve, that, that is an option for you here. But, uh, you know, we're, we're proud of the website and would uh, like you to come over and take a visit if you have an interest in... In uh, you know the things that I'm I'm teaching you and applying to what applying to what you're trading and what you're doing. So, well, all of that said, I will uh, let that go. There'll be a little uh, tag in the in uh, underneath the video if you'd like to to click through and look at that. So back to Bitcoin. All right. So here I've got the this is the eight hour of Bitcoin to the dollar on Bitstamp and Bitstamp is that's where I trade it. It's just what I've been using as a reference uh, for all of the Bitcoin charts that we've been doing and looking at here. So we're, as I've shown many times, and we've done Bitcoin, you know, often as you'd expect. So we're working off of this is the bullish count that we have our correction in, and we're working off of this as our low. So you can see here now we're we're we're, we're kind of in the critical window here, and hopefully we're going to get some resolution here. Now, you know, when you first look at that, one of the things that that you know most technicians will look at right away is we we can certainly look at this trend line and and potential resistance that we're going to run into. Should we get up and threaten this here? So if we were to do that and bump into that resistance, we're, we're setting up for a double top. Now, if we get through it, what is often the case is that by getting through resistance like that, it will, it will often come back and serve as the support on the way back down if we get that and we start a correction, just, just something to keep in mind. But if we go a little more fully here and, and carry this trend line thinking forward, well, you can also certainly do this. And, and when we do that, you know, this is what bears are looking at because it, it, it sets up rather nicely as, a, as potentially we'd have here an ending diagonal. So if this were, if the, you know, for the ultra bears that are, that are looking at this and see one, two, three, this potentially an ABC here, this overlapping the, the one here. So you have the, the market structure and the geometry here that if this is going to fail and we are not going to get this fifth here and we start to roll over, you know, this, I mean, we're, we're, it's getting harder and harder to make the bear case. But if we're going to roll over, there's the potential for this to come back down all the way if we stay within that, that trend line geometry. You know, there's really, we're going to go down to three. You know, bears might look at that and say, hey, we're going to three grand. I, I get people write me all the time say, you know, you're, you know, just a fool. You don't know what you're talking about. Bitcoin's not going down to three grand. Well, you know, you can see what you want in the charts. But, you know, I try and be more methodical about it and objective and just look for probabilities. You know, I, I make no claim that this is the count and that I have it right. As I say all the time, I mean, I'm wrong all the time. But this, this is certainly a potential count here. And so all you can ever do is put on a potential count. Only after the fact do you have the actual count. And that can change. So, you know, here we can look at this and say, well, there's certainly the possibility here that we go up and finish this as a five. If we do, that's a pretty substantial tell for us coming off of this low. If we get off of that in five, that's, that certainly adds validity to the idea that this completes the correction. We've come off in, in a five wave here. 
you know that that that's fuel to the bull to the bull fire, if you will. So do we get there? Well, you know we're we're stuck in this range here. So here here's our one high. The four held it. So it's it's certainly trading in a way that allows for us to look at this and see. Well, despite the you know, it's kind of an ugly one, and there could be some dispute about whether or not that's the pivot high for the one, but that's the deepest retracement we get. So we, we do have this setting up to play, despite the, the kind of ugly one and the shallow two. There, there's all the potential here for this to play up and give us a new high here in this swing and get, get that fifth, which would imply that we've got a one wave setting up. Right, so that they, the correction would be over. Now, we certainly have some resistance that we've run into. So if I just work from major pivot here, if I would propose B, B high, <clears throat> all we've done is run into the 50. And this is a no surprise. That's where we hit some resistance. Now, can we get through it? Well, here's the next big big tell. Can we get through the 618? And you can see that, that you know, if we're, if we're going to hit a, a, a common FIB target, for the uh, five wave here, even if we look at the two through the four, this is an area where we're likely to hit some resistance. And then don't forget, we still have to deal with the all the way back. Right? We haven't even gotten to that 50 yet. So that's some resistance we're gonna run into. But first one we gotta deal with is this pivot here. So if we look at this and think, okay, well, if that's, if the, if, you know, if that is a one, two, three, four, well, we, we gotta look at that relationship between the two and the four. That That's just where you would start. So if we look there, well, here, notably, this is kind of interesting. If, you, if I open this up, if you can see that. Well, what, what have we done? From the two low to the three high, we went right into the golden zone. Just, just a wick, wick went through into it. Now, <laughs> that is an eight-hour bar. But we, go, we drop into the golden zone, and look where our target is. The algo target for that pull is right here, just, just in front of the 618 here. So we, you know, Bitcoin, we, I don't know anything that trades more technically, but it, it, it's certainly in, in the crypto space, I should qualify that. So this is a likely target for us to run into additional resistance for now, now we've got confluence here setting up that we've got the algo target from the algos that bought here coming right, just, you know, the, the front run you would anticipate on the 618 for the algos that will be there selling, the same ones that sold here that are going to defend it all the way up to the 618. We get to the other side of the 65, then they're going to flip. So that would be that would be an encouraging sign for bulls because it's it's not it's not that they that they buy there, right? As I've said many times with the with the algorithms and Again, I'm, I'm not speaking for all algorithms in the market. I'm telling you there's a group of traders that have written algorithms that do this particular pattern. And, you know, if you want to argue with me, I, I show you about, I, I don't know, an unlimited number of examples. So, but let, let's not digress. But so what, the point I'm trying to make is not that they flip and go long there, but they now have flipped and they'll buy the next 50%. So let me tell you, so if that becomes a one, if we complete this in five, come here. So if we get a one here and we set up for a potential two, three, four, five, let's go into a larger degree, just make it easier to see. Okay, if, if we can get this and then we, we have, with a five wave, it would imply that we've got a one wave here. Well, the next thing up is gonna be a 50% of that entire complete five wave sequence. So then now I gotta pull this back here. And we again, I'm hypothetical here. Now, if we if we top up here at that algo target at the 618, giving us so let's let's not distort the chart here. So here, this would be our five potentially sets up as our one. Just a hypothetical roadmap. We don't have it yet. Then we'd pull from swing low to the completion of the five wave, and there's the next 50. Right. So that's that's what the algorithms will do. Right. That's that's the next buy. So if we get this and you're not long in in Bitcoin already, that's your next trade right there. Right. So there's there's the target. So that that's the setup. So if you are long and you're looking for this to grind up here to what are we 12, eight in that range, you know, you, you, you have to know that the likelihood is high that there's a retracement following the completion of that five wave structure profit taking. In addition, we've got algorithms that will be looking to sell here off of this swing high to low at that 618 plus the algo target. It's all there. You know, you have to anticipate that. So does that mean that you, you know, you sell all of your Bitcoin? That's that's not necessarily what I'm suggesting. I'm just telling you to be prepared for the likely, like not inevitable, but likely retracement that will come upon the completion of a five wave structure like that. 
So if you're if you're not long, that's kind of what you're waiting for. I mean, there's there's opportunity in here. We're sitting here at what ten nine, you know, call it eleven, and we've got upside, you know, twelve eight. You know, there's plenty of trading in there. There's plenty of opportunity if we're going to get there between where we sit now and where we're going. But you know, it's not not likely to go in a straight line as we go down to smaller time frames. Remember, remember, I'm on an eight hour chart here. But you know, sometimes it's always a good idea to step back and say, okay, where are the major pivots? Based on those, what can I see? Where are we likely going here? Now, this is not inevitable. This is not inevitable because there's there's a very reasonable case for those that are bearish, bearish leaning, as we as we uh, as I showed you earlier, where we drew that trend line here. That right now there, there's a. There's an argument that could be made here that if we don't get up here, that this this we could just have an A B. It'll be tough to call that a B since it's been very technical, but and we'll we'll look at that. But you could make the case that there's an A B and that we're going down for a C, or this could be a one two. Those are less and less likely. So the when we dig down into uh, smaller time frames, I'll show you why that I think that that's less and less likely just based on the way the market's moving. Right, it's looking impulsive, less less corrective. But that said, from swing high to swing low, all of this is still an internal internal retracement to that swing. We are still internal to that until we get beyond it, right? and then we still got to get beyond the swing absolute high to this low. So these are all internal corrections. So let's go down to the to the smaller time frame, see if we can make sense of where we are and how, if we're going to get there, how we're likely to get there. We'll take that off for now. So I'm going to go over here to this. Now I've done this deliberately here. So now I'm I'm still on Bitstamp. I'm, this is the one hour. And again, I think this is a good exercise and a good thing to do if you're, you know, regardless of whether you're in the market or not, and you're just trying to get a handle on where we are. Strip the chart bear. Let's push this off so we can get some more room to work with. Get your chart, just strip it bare. Okay, what, what are the major pivots that we're, we're trying to qualify this low? What, what, is, what is easy to see? What is easy to see? So if we just go to a five wave structure here and we look at this and we go, okay, well, it's, you know, the, 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 this is a little challenging because this, this has the look of a five wave structure, but I'm going to just go with this as the deepest correction. So it would be fairly easy to look at that and go, mm, okay, there's the four, so we're likely going up for the five. Let's let's take that degree down just a, a shade. Okay, that's that's not unreasonable. Just you know, now an Elliott trader is going to be a little bit more picky about digging into these retracements and 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 these moves here. But as we look here now, again, just just what's easy to see. Well, I got a one two. We know that's a shallow two. And so the first thing we're going to do is we got to start measuring and qualifying. Well, if we take the, the length of the one and we project it from the proposed two, well, you see we've gone to the 1272, right? So not, not to be discounted, that's square root of 1618. We're through the hundred, so we know we have a candidate for a third, a technical pivot. We knew that was the 50 as well from the, swing, from the B high to this low. So this, this plays as, as a third, right? So... If this is a three and this is a, a deep four, well, we want to check that four, right? Of course. So same thing we would do in any chart, any chart. Doesn't doesn't matter. Just the fact that this is Bitcoin, same thing. Wouldn't matter what it was. Well, again, here's that little dip into the golden zone. So yeah, that's deep. That's absolutely un without any qualification. That is deep. And we are beyond the norms of where you would find a fourth, fourth much more typically between the 23 and the 50, right? We saw we had the reaction there, but we had that leg down. But from a pure algo perspective, I got a pivot low to a pivot high. We just go on here. I promise you that's algo buying right there. So where's their target? It's sitting right up here, right? And that's uh, that's the well, I'm around here. So we'll call it 12.8. So we have the potential here for this to be playing as a one, two, three, four. Now, there, there's another count in here that, so if I take that off, right, we know it's at, with the wicked line here. If we look here, that, that, you know, maybe not surprisingly, there's the 1618, the length of the one. You know, just a, a technical pivot to be aware of here. Now, that dashed line, all I've done here is just wicked off what is likely to be some prior support, potentially some resistance. You can see you've got this also over here. Always good to look left. You know, good idea to wick these off. We can see some prior, uh, 
prior. My least favorite thing about TradingView, it takes a few clicks to get them hot. So we get this little zone here. So you see how we that this kind of lines up here. Prior support zones, we can see that this level seemed here, offered some support, some support, resistance. This seems to be a critical level. So I wick those off here, and it's interesting how they come up right at the 1618 and potential algo target here for our fifth. Right, so we're just stacking up potential zones where we're likely to see the market react. Right, just because there's other there are traders that are either stuck or you know, have been waiting to get there or waiting to sell there. So again, we stack it. So if I if I just just to revisit this, if I take my swing low here to my swing high, right? Look how they just start to line up and we stack it. Golden zone. We know that's the golden zone from above. There's the 1618. So we're, we're really stacking a nice, a nice confluence zone here where we're likely to see a reaction. It's not very big. You know, there, anything else you might put on that? Well, you know, a channel is a reasonable thing to look for if, if this is going to hold as a 3-4. Well, you know, we get, we get a cluster up here. Right, 12.8, 12.8, that has been the zone for a while. This, you know, again, in, pr in prior videos, we've identified this repeatedly. So, you know, that's something to be aware of. Again, the idea being that, that this sets up to start, start that move down. If we complete this fifth, the setup is there for that to retrace. If we complete this in five, we'll set up for a two. All right, so let me pull that off. Now let's dig in a little deeper here since we've got this established, we can pull some of this off. Anything else that we can see that would be useful to us. Well, there there is a reasonable reasonable count if we do, dig into this third here. Right now, this is how I have it. It's one, you know, it, it's it's one scenario. Right. If you da go down to the smaller time frames, we we also have this as a contender. Right. I think this is less likely though. So that we we have a one two three. We've put in the four here and we've completed the five wave. If that were the case, then we'd be looking at it this way from swing low to swing high. Why do I think that's less likely? Well, partly because of this, the shallowness of this. And we, we see here we had this, we had this wave, the wave one high here, right? And so, you know, the, the, it's a contender, right? So you can't discount it. So we'd have the extension in the one, the, th the three is certainly longer than the five. That's a contender as a one. But I th if we're gonna stay here and we're gonna continue to move higher, this gets less and less likely. Less and less likely, in my view, based on what we're starting to see here, if we're going to get up here and the fact that that's shallow. Now, you, know, you, you got to keep in mind that perhaps there's some personality here because this was also shallow. If we, if we look back here to the, what, the proposed one, that too went to the 38. So, you know, you got to keep it as an alternate, but I think it is less likely. I think we are much more likely to be here with our third. Here's our fourth. All right, so if we pull pull that apart, then we can dig into that third and we can call it, we can look at it this way. So let me get to a different color. So from, from that two, pretty reasonable case that we've got a three, I think that's truncated C, that the crypto truncated C. So let's go down to the sub minuet. So we can see there that that's a reasonable, reasonable count here. So we get one, two, we get this nice subdivision. I think that four is there. So we've got a one, two. So we've got all the things that we'd look for in an impulsive move off of this low. One, two, three, four, hold the golden zone. There's the target all lines up does not mean it must get there, but it certainly is set. It's set as a contender to get there. Now let's dig in a little deeper here. If we go now, if we go into this move here, where are we now? Right, hard right edge of the market. What what can we see now? This is our contender for that low as a four. Well, now we dig in here. Well, we can certainly see that the the framework is here for this to play as potentially a five wave structure. So again, if you're going to dig in here and do this kind of detailed work, well, you you, you got to just start measuring. So I'd look for that is if, if that's my one and that's my two, reasonable. Well, here's the highest probability zone for my third right here, right? So and we see we get. You know, it stalls there. How about we say it that way? We stall and then we kick up here. Here's the 2618. 
So that would be the extreme for the third. So this might be part of, of some subdivision here, but I think there's a reasonable candidate here to, to count this this way. So th this pretty straightforward. We can get a one, we can get a two. I think what you have here is a three. I think you've got an expanded flat into that B wave and we've come down here for our four. Now what, what a di well, so five would be potentially up here. Now what, what additionally would make me think that? All right, now remember, we're down on a 60 minute. Well, the three wave structure here, you know, that make, that gives me pause looking at that. That does not, doesn't look like a diagonal here. The three wave, it's essentially a three wave structure here. So we, again, you, you're trying to see, you're trying to solve the puzzle. So does that fit? Well, let, let's consider what the algos might be doing. So if we look at the length of the two, here, if this is our two low to the proposed three high, look what we get. So here's the four here, comes right to the Vegas wave. Love the Vegas wave. Goes a little through the 38 into the highest probability zone for a fourth, right? Right there, we just get a, little, a couple of wicks past the 38, where do we go? Right to an algo target. Interesting, right? So, inter so the assumption would be that, they, that the, the algorithms kept that swing here, right? It falls short, so they don't change, nothing changes, comes back down, so that's certainly a contender given the reaction that we're seeing here. So if this starts to roll over and we start to move further away from that, then that solidifies this, at least in my mind, as the contender for a completed one wave off of this four low. Right? If we if we if we pull back out, right, and we think of what we're trying to do here, that's a contender off of this for what would potentially be the one wave going towards our fifth. All right, so we, we would be trying to get there this way. So if, if that's a one wave, then we're looking for the, God damn it, we're looking for the two here to get, get towards that. Then we're looking for the, the, the inevitable four to retrace potential resistance support zone here as we come down for that. And then we finish it one last push up for a five wave to give us our target. Right, so you see how that all kind of plays into itself. Right, so again, as I'll often tell you, what we're trying to do is use the Elliott wave to kind of dance around what the algos are likely doing because we can't, we can't just follow them exactly. We can just try and figure out where they are and just kind of use the Elliott wave to, to help us with the risk with the risk reward ratios. Where can we get on board? If they're buyers here and they've already hit their target and we're going to start to retrace, where are they likely to buy next? Can, can we use the pattern of Elliott Wave to try and position ourselves to get a low risk, reasonably high reward, at least a three to one, to try and get in behind them? So let's, let's, let's dig back into that detail. Does that make sense? So if we open it up again. Okay, so let's see where we can see it here. So we've got a potential contender here for that roadmap. Certainly would be valid from an Elliott perspective. Now I add, Right, as mo many Elliott traders would not. I'm adding the algo plays in there. So it, it, the, the other contender, so you might say, mm, I don't buy that, I don't buy that. That looks like the three, that looks like the four. Well, if that's the case, right? So then you might look here and say, well, th there's, the, there's the move, there's the straight swing low to swing high comes right to the 50 to the tick. Well, if that's the case, then we gotta rethink here. So then, so what do we have happening here? Well, we haven't hit the target yet, but we're rolling over. This is kind of why I, I, I defer to the other count because this looks, now I could be wrong, I could be wrong. I'm just, again, I'm going based on what I'm seeing here and trying to put the puzzle pieces together. If that were the case, right, could, if that's complete there, then we, we've completed with algos and rarely, they're left hanging. They don't like that. They don't like that. They, they don't get their target. Well, how, how could that get there? If that's a completed completed five wave structure, well, then we got to work from the absolute low. As Elliott traders, right? Forget, not now, now I'm going Elliott. I'm, I'm moving away from Algo. Now I'm Elliott. So I'm swing low to swing high. Their reload here is down here. So we'd be looking for a two to get to that target. Does that make sense? One, two, three. Yeah, I mean, you, you, can, you can get that count to fly. The, that there's nothing, no invalidation of any, any Elliott rule set. That certainly plays. So it's a bit of a judgment call here as to whether or not you think that three-wave structure gives you your third. It's beyond the norms, right? Remember, I started measuring. This was the 1618. This was the 2618. 
again, it kind of steers me towards this as an A, B, C. But th this, this works. I mean, you, you can't argue with that. So I, I certainly have got a clear five wave structure there. So if that's going to complete as a one wave, well, we'd have to count it this way then. Then we'd be looking at this as a one coming down for the two, three, four, five. Let's get that in a different degree. So it, you kind of have to wait and see here, right? If there, if there's, if that's completing a one wave, well, then we're looking. We're, the anticipation is we're going to get down as deep as the 50. That simply because that's the high probability zone for a second. Right? We, 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 we have seen Bitcoin, the impatience of the market, they, they pivot on the 38. But if you're, if you're setting up to take a trade based on probabilities, that's where you'd be looking for it. And what, what are we at there? Where's the 50? At 10,227 on Bitstamp? You know, j just a 50 from that low. Right? So you, you, you kind of have to keep these counts you know, kind of side by side to see where, where are we. Because if if we if you go back to my count, which I which is what I, where I think we have it here, All right? So if we've three A B C and we've completed the five, right? Then we're here. Okay. So just just a function of you know, what, do you think it's completed or do you think we still have more to go? Right, so if, if, if we've completed, then we're buying down here. Algos from here get left hanging. Do you see that? that that's the variable. Are they going to get left hanging without getting that target? That's the only difference between the two counts because it's, it's not a dramatic difference. Whether this is the third and, 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 we've, and we've topped here. Well, I have to go actually have to do it this way. If this is the three, four, and we've, and we've top, topped here to complete this as a fifth, then this comes down a little bit. Subtle, subtle, but you know, when you're trying to do this with precision, you know, not, not to be discounted. If we're complete, then it changes. Uh, you, st you still may get it. So you just kind of have to watch and see how does it move off of the pivot. Do we go, do we go into a three-wave structure? Do we get something like this to bring us down? Right, then that would imply that the, pivot, that the five is in. Five is in, one sits waiting to reset, and then we, we look for a retracement of the entire move. Right? It's a little tricky, a little subtle. You know, it's just a question of, you know, you know, you know the algo is going to get left hanging. It right? doesn't mean that they may not eventually get there. But if you go swing low to swing high and the algos that bought there, mm, they, they don't like to be left hanging. Okay, so we, we, we shall see on that. But that's kind of where that sits. So you've got a couple of contenders here. The only question is, are we complete? If that is complete, as I think it may be, then we're coming down in threes. We'd be looking, well, shit, you know, we don't know. We'd be looking for this to come down in threes. If we get a three, then that's a must take. You know, you, you, you waited a long time to get that, to get some more confirmation of where we were in the count. This is certainly five waves of some sort, whether it's here, here, here. We can see a clean five-way structure there. What happens next, right? A little bit of hurry up and wait to try and get that. But coming all the way back to where we started, we're, we're just trying to get get up to this target. And right now, it would imply that even with that, even with this little retracement here, what did we say, that's 12.8. Even with, if we come back down here, right, all we're doing is just setting up to get to those targets. You see, here, here they are. Right, so it might, might be three, four, five, right? All, all just lined up to give us that content, that, that, that target there. And it's just a question of how do we get there? And where can we get on board with a clean price pattern, wave count pattern, fib swings, algo entries, algo targets? How are we going to get there? That's all we're trying to do, right? Map that out. How can we get there? So if I put the wave on it, then we pull out a little bit. So there it is. Does that make sense? So let's let's pull out just a little bit. All right. So that's what it looks like. D is that reasonable here to complete that up here for the fifth? Pretty reasonable to me. So here's your next opportunity to get on, to get long. Just playing the odds. Playing the odds.
That's all we can do. All right. Again, as I uh, said, you know, feel free to check out TradeDevils.com. You know, if you're interested in some more coaching or want to join the membership, get access to the Discord where we, you know, have now quite a few members exchange. It's a great idea exchange. There's a lot of camaraderie there. That's you know looking at everything in the crypto space and looking at branching out into other asset classes. So there's a lot of content there, a lot of things. Basically what these videos are, every day this is just a real-time lesson in applying exactly what's being taught at the Discord. But we do it there. It, you know, We've got a lot of recorded material where you can do, take it at your own time. And then every day when I do these videos, I'm just demonstrating that technique in real time in live markets. It's, it's, it's the same thing you're going to learn. You're just going to learn how to do it there at your own pace. And then it's a, it's a constant process of practice, asking questions, learning, screen time, understanding the odds. You know, that, that's essentially what we're doing there. Then you take this skill, you apply it to any asset class you like, because the asset class does not matter, as I've said many times. It does not matter. The markets move the same way, whether we're looking at crypto, Forex, futures, equities, it's exactly the same patterns repeating over and over and over again. All right, guys, if this is helpful to you, go ahead and subscribe. Interested in TradeDevils.com, go have a look. I think you'll like what you see. All right, guys.